Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this, to this presentation. I'm Jean Adam, I'm technical consultant at Odoo. And now we will talk about how to import big data uh, with a tool that is uh, very efficient. Uh, I'm currently using it in different projects and I found it just amazing. So I'm really happy to share it with you now. I will first explain you why in some case we will uh, need uh, an extra tool than the Odoo import wizard. Okay, then I will, uh, we will introduce uh, the tool by itself and we will explore some options of this tool through different, through different use cases. I mean, I will show you what are the uh, issues we can face and how we can solve it. And at the end, we will have a moment for you, for your question and your answer. All right? So let's go. Why do we need an extra tool? Well, Odoo has already an import wizard that is quite powerful, that is somewhat easy to use. But if you think about it, your import must be started manually. You have to be in front of your computer. And you have to process one file at a time. It means that you have to choose your right model, uh, you have to click on the import button, choose your file, check your field mapping, test it, and load it. So when you have to perform a full migration of the, your customer data, it could be quite fastidious. And also, there is one caveat, is that with big data file, you can reach a timeout because the, the file is imported, uh, the, the import is running inside a transaction and Odoo limits the time allowed for a transaction. And if you reach the timeout, all your data are rolled back. So what you can do at this time, <laughs> either you can change the configuration parameters that limit the transaction time, but then you have to restart your server, okay? But if you are in production, and if you do that in the business hour, you won't be popular, I guess. And, <laughs> or you can uh, split your file into smaller chunks. But once again, you have to do that manually. So we had the need of something else more suited for big data. And the result is a Python script. The advantages of, of that, because it's a script, you can import in batch. So you can write down all your import command line into a batch file and run your batch to start your import, all your import consecutively. But the tool on, uh, on its own will give us the ability to manage big files. Otherwise, I would change the title, <laughs> of course. Um, we will also have the ability to improve the speed. And last but not least, we will be able to configure some model's behavior. I will explain you how immediately, but I feel you curious now. Yes, yeah, so let's introduce the, the tools by itself. So the tool is Odoo importfee.py. It is available on PyP. So you can install it by making a sudo Odoo import export client. And it's also available on GitHub under the repository Odoo CSV tools of Thibaut Francois, who is the author of the tools. He's one of our team leader who makes the pleasure to be among us today. <laughs> Thank you, Thibaut. <laughs> So yeah, to install it, you should come and pip install or do import for client, or you clone the repository and you have it. Once you get it, you can run the command odoo importfee.py dash dash help. And you will see all the options. Yeah, there is a bunch of it, but only three are mandatory. The first one is the configuration file. This is where you define all the parameters to make an RPC connection. Most important one, uh, the, 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 your, your, your host name, your database, your credential. So just remember that uh, you can import remotely with an encrypted protocol. That's the important thing. The second one is the file name that contains the data, and then the model where to put the data in. So you have a bunch of options. They are well explained in the usage, but we won't read it now. Instead, I will suggest we will explore how to use it and why to use it through different use cases, all right? 
So the first use case I want to show you is how to import REST partner with a parent ID. So basically, I will use a CSV file with two partners. Yeah, it's my big company. I have one partner that is the company and another that is an employee inside the company. So notice that on every record, I will choose to use an XML ID here on the ID column. I just use a name, that is the only required field on REST Partner. And then I set the employee belongs to the company by putting the parent in the parent ID, the XML ID of its company. All right? So the first tip I would give you is to separate your data and your relation. So first you build the file with only your data, with the XML ID, and then in another file you put the related field in front of the XML ID. Why to do this? Because when you will import this file, you are sure that the XML ID here of the parent ID already exists because it was imported before. All right? So how to load this? Very simple. <coughs> yeah, it's a bit, uh, I don't know if it's readable, so you call the script odoinportfree.py with the connection file, you specify the, the first file you want to import, and then the model that is res.partner, and then you load the second file, and it's done. Very simple. But now, how to import many res.partner? If you have a big file, that you want to import with the import wizard, things look like this. All the records in my file will be imported in one transaction. But if I have many file, uh, many records, the potential issue is that I trigger a timeout because I need time to import this. And if I reach a timeout at this level, at that level, everything is rolled back. Okay. We have a problem. But if you have a problem, we have a solution. And the solution here is to use the dash dash size option. How to use it? You simply put a number of records. Here in my example is 100. And now my import will look like this. The first 100 records will be imported in one transaction, here in blue. And then another transaction will be created for the next 101 and so on until the, until the end of the file. So by doing this, I reduce the number of records involved in one transaction, so I reduce the time needed for the transaction to run. Hence, I can avoid timeouts. But you notice that the total import time here remains the same. In the reality, it's even a bit more because of the network overhead due to the multiple transaction. So how can we improve the speed we can use the worker option. Here I choose to work with two worker. So I simply add in my current line dash dash worker equal two. And at the end, all the records in the file <coughs> will be spread across two fleets. And because these two fleets are running in parallel, I divide the total important by two. Simple, efficient, genius. Okay. <laughs> But wait, when we are talking about multi-threading, we could have a drawback. And the drawback here is, someone has an ID? Concurrent, Concurrent update, yes. You have won a wonderful keyring over there. <laughs> <laughs> <Did it? Yeah. laughs> so remember me at the end. <laughs> the drawback is concurrent update. Why? Let's suppose here I have a first import tweet. <coughs> Who's imported the first partner? My partner two. This one. When this record will be imported, it will trigger an update on the parent ID, that is my partner one. Why? Because the parent ID is a related field that is non-read only, the right method on rest partner has been overridden, so it's like that. You will trigger an update on the parent. And if in the same time, another tweet is imported another partner that has the same parent, and both streets will try to update the same record here. That's an issue. But if we have a problem, we have a solution, exactly. And the solution here is to use the group by option. So 
How can I use it? Very simple. I just put the name of the field in the group by. Here is the parent ID slash ID because I'm using XML ID. And at that time, what it looks like. Hmm, great. The Python script will first group all the records by parent ID. And it will ensure that all the records that, has this, that have the same parents will be imported by the same thread. So I will never have different threads that will try to update the same parent. Simple, efficient, genius. <laughs> uh, yes, don't you? <laughs> How about the case? How about that? How about the case if this parent ID is not available yet? It's not? Available yet. Maybe you need to have group by, by several fields. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, 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 we will discuss after, okay? Because I'm a bit in the hurry. <laughs> but thank you your, for your question. You, you will probably win another. <laughs> All right. So it's enough for the REST partner. Uh, actually, um, in the reality, it could be more subtle, but it's, uh, it's probably too technical for this purpose. So let's discuss after with the author of the tool. So yeah, we, we, we are lucky he's here. <laughs> so another use case I want to show you is how to import translation. So here I will import my product catalog. Yeah, I have a big shop, I have a wallet and a bicycle. So I just put the name and the price, okay? And please don't forget the XML ID on each, uh, on each product. And by doing this, I set the name in the, in, in the source language, okay? It's a wallet and a bicycle. I import this with the model and the file, connection file, very simple. But now, what if I want to translate the term? If I want to translate the name, it would be great if I could simply build a new CSV file with only the translated name in front of my XML ID. But if I import this file now, or do we replace the French, we replace the English name by the French name, okay? But that's not what I want. I want to import translation. Okay, but I don't want to deal with higher translation model. I want to keep the focus on my product. So how can I do this? I can use the context. Yeah, I can define the context in the, in the common line. I said context with the key lang. And by doing this, I just tell Odoo, okay, update the name. That's the only thing you can do. But now we are working in French, all right? Genius, very efficient. So there are lots of uh, dictionary keys in the context that we that we can use. It's not the purpose now to uh, to explore uh, them deeply, but feel free to come and see me at the end of the talk. It will be a pleasure for me to discuss it with you. All right, but there is only one that I want to show you is when you have to deal with many to many relationships. So here, if I want to set different product category on my product. I will put all the XML IDs of my category in, in one line, in the same line of the product. But in the reality, um, there is a re the relational table exists in my customer database. So it's easier to extract the data like this. But if I import like this, I will set category one of my product, but the second line will replace category one by cat category two. That's not what I want. I want to add the category two. <coughs> so to do this, I can use the context with the key update many to many equal true. That's the goal of this. And then I can import such a data structure. All right? It's very useful. The last um, use case I want to show you is how to import account move lines. Yeah, it's one example among others. But this is an, an interesting one. Just as for remembering, the account move lines is a master detail model I have the account moves and the related account move lines in another model. And all are linked with the many to one and one to many fields. So, how could we import it? <laughs> if you remember what I said, okay, the XML ID must be imported before, okay, and you can tell me, hey, Jean, I know, <laughs> I will import first all my account moves with the XML ID and then all my account move lines with the XML ID here in the, of the account move. 
and it will be okay because the XML ID here are already imported. But I will say you, no, it won't work. <laughs> yeah, because there is a balance check on the move line. Balance check means that on one move line, I have an account, I have an amount, okay? And this amount must be balanced by the inverse amount in another move line. So here, when I will import the first move line, it will be rejected because <laughs> the, the, the other move line that balanced the first one is not imported yet. And the other move line won't be imported because the first <laughs> is, is not imported yet. So if you look at all the code, don't be afraid to look at all the code, you could find check move validity context key and tell, oh, I will disable the check move validity and it, <laughs> it will import the move line. Yes, it will be imported. You're true. But at the end, you are not sure the balance is correct because you have disabled the check. So what we need, actually, we need to import the account move and all its related move lines in one time. OK? So that Odoo knows in the same time all the move lines and can perform the balance check. And that's exactly the purpose of the dash dash O2M option. So how to import one-to-many relationship? Because O2M stands for one-to-many relationship. Simply, you can build a CSV file like this. You put in the same file your master data and all the child data here. And you import like this, a simple command line with the dash dash O2M option. All right? It means that the account move and the move line will be imported in one create operation. So we have seen the most important parameters. The dash dash size to avoid the timeouts. The worker to increase the speed. The group by to avoid concurrence update. The context to configure some model behavior. And the O2M to import one to many relationship. So if you are really interested in, here is was just a teasing, okay? <laughs> but I would strongly suggest you to take a look at the Odoo import example repository of Thibaut Francois. You will have a deep understanding of our, how the things work and also how we can fully automate an import with the error management also. Very interesting. I, I, I strongly suggest to take a look at this. It's a real example. It's not a demo that works. It's a real example that, that works. All right? I would say to conclude that Odoo Import Free.py is a very efficient tool that allows us to fully automate a load process. Very efficient because we can manage the things and put it everything in batch. <coughs> and it lets you develop also a new import strategy because now you know uh, what kind of data structure you can build and what option to use to make it successful. But there is no magic. <laughs> you still have to, uh, you still need a good knowledge of the Odoo model structure and the business process in the top of it. All right? So thank you for your attention.